Thank you, TJ. Thank you so much, TJ. Good evening to the citizens of Douglas County and good evening to the Board of Commissioners. Today is Tuesday, March 16th, and um, it is 6 p.m. And thank you for joining our virtual uh, Microsoft Teams Commission meeting. This is our legislative meeting, and I will start off with roll call. I will start with District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4 Commissioner Ann jones guider Present. Chairman Ramona Jackson-Jones. Present. Board of, Commission, uh, Board of Commissioners, we do have a quorum. Uh, this evening, Board of Commissioners, we are blessed and so and highly favored to have Pastor, Pastor uh, Madeline Hubbard here today from Crawford Chapel uh, United Methodist. She will render the invocation for us. And after the invocation, uh, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County, I uh, ask if you would join me in reciting the pledge to the flag. Pastor Hubbard, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let us pray uh, to the, before I start the prayer, I would like to say thank you, first of all, for your invitation uh, to come before you all tonight. Uh, and also, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner, and the Board of Commissioner, I, I thank God for each one of you all, and I will be doing a unity prayer for us tonight. Let us pray. Father God, help us to be united in this meeting. The same way you are in unity with your son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, help us to be one in spirit and have a common purpose. I ask that all the items that are on the agenda, that you will be in control of each one of those items and that you will allow our board to make the right decisions that can affect everyone. I ask Lord now that your Holy Spirit fill this place with your power, with your help, and that we will all walk in unity together. This prayer I ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen and praise God. Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, Madeline Hubbard for that power, powerful prayer of unity. And thank you so much. And um, I appreciate you. And this is the day the Lord has made. And we appreciate you uh, taking uh, this um, invitation on such a short notice to come pray for the Board of Commissioners and this entire county. Thank you. Anytime, anytime. Thank you. Board of Commissioners, if you could join me, you're welcome. Board of Commissioners, if you can join me and, and the citizens of Douglas County in reciting the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, in full, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. And again, thank you so much again, uh, Pastor uh, Hubbard. We appreciate you coming in. All right, we're gonna move on to public comment. Um, do Clerk, do we have any public comment tonight? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Sharon Bachtel signed up to speak. Ms. Bachtel, are you on the line? Can you hear? Yes, ma'am. You can go ahead. And Lisa, give her, would you frame the instructions for uh, time? Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, Ms. Bachtel, if you could just repeat your name and give us the topic you're speaking on and, um, and, and just remember it must pertain to the agenda and you will have three minutes. So whenever you want to start, you, you may begin. Are you there? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear okay. you. So you can go ahead. Okay, this is Sharon Bachtel, 6231 South Skyline Drive, and thank you for allowing me to speak. I always thought a vote was binding. That is why I don't understand how the commission 
can vote on an expense account that does not provide destinations and purpose for travel. This month and last month, expense reports were presented for vote without this info being available with, until later in the month. And the county credit card statement on the agenda in September contained expenses for travel that was personal and not to be charged to the county. How do you know this is not the case this month? According to the state law, at the last regular meeting of the board each month, the clerk shall submit in writing a report of all receipts and disbursements by the various officers of Douglas County during the preceding month. How can the clerk submit a report if all of the receipts are not turned in and verified, and all of this is after you've already voted? What if there is an error on an expense denied? Can the finance department change the amount that you voted on? I think your process is wrong. If you see some verifications, you're not available and done before you vote. I also have some concerns about credit cards usage. The credit card statement in September 2020 showed that a commissioner used the county credit card to make personal purchase, purchases. It is stated on that receipt that the county pays $156.47 and the commissioner pays $154.11. It is against the rules to use the county credit card for personal expenses. There was a $73.50 charge for a cigar shop. When I requested that receipt, I was told by Open Records I could not receive it because it was personal. If it is on a county card, we should be able to see it. It is against the rules to use a county card for the purchase that's purchase of alcohol or tobacco. How do we know if this rule is not violated? The guidelines for reimbursement state that the commissioners cannot be reimbursed for more expenses over the monthly limit. In 2020, a commissioner overspent the limit of $300 four times. Did that commissioner receive the full reimbursement? You all voted for this, so does that mean you all approve of violating the rules? Last month, a credit card statement showed a late charge of $38 and charges carried from previous billing cycle. Why are we not paying off the credit cards monthly? I understand there was a dispute over $149, but at least the minimum payment should be made to avoid late charges. Again, why aren't these credit cards being paid in full monthly? Are we still lacking in funds? It's hard to trip trust a commission that told us in December 2019 that we have plenty of money for any catastrophe. Then a few months later, the county did not have the $900,000 the health department needed for COVID tests and supplies. The commission raised our taxes 27%, forcing us to cut back on our own expenses. During a pandemic, no less. Some of us have to watch our budgets because we live on fixed incomes. If we have to watch our pennies, then so should you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Patrol. We appreciate you coming in and certainly your concerns could be taken under advisement. Thank you. We're going to move on and I've received notification from the clerk that we have uh, two presentations tonight. Well, one which is presentation and one is part of our resolution that I'm going to move uh, certainly board. I, I want to put these items up um, to the top of the list to allow these individuals to to leave because they have other engagements. Uh, certainly at your pleasure and is uh, and I added this particular item, which was the COVID-19 uh, vaccine presentation and certainly wanted our uh, public health officials to come in and to render a report to Douglas County tonight and also so since our citizens are engaged tonight and listening I wanted them to hear a quick report of what's going on with our COVID-19 status and also with the vaccines here in Douglas County. Uh, Board of Commissioners starting with your pleasure no further ado I have Lisa Crossman here tonight to present. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you, Dr. Jackson Jones. I'm excited to be here. Um, I've got some good news and I, um, after so many times of coming to meet with you with not so good news, it's good to be able to come and share uh, some hope with you. Uh, let me give you a little bit on the landscape uh, and the current cases in Douglas County. Uh, as of today, we were still seeing a decreasing number of positive cases um, since mid uh, February, we've been seeing those numbers come down steadily. We're at 263 cases per 100,000 of the residents, which is 
um, a, a tremendous reduction over what we had seen after the holidays. Um, and so that's great news. We're at a 5.3% positivity rate in the community. Um, and so that also has been coming down steadily. I will tell you that um, that's still considered high spread um, and we still want to be diligent in our practices, but um, that is tremendous news. And to see those trends continuing to come down is just gives us a lot of hope. Uh, we also are seeing the numbers come down in our hospitalization rates. Uh, our bed use in the hospitals is about 85% of ICU beds and inpatient beds. Um, that's still high, but dramatically improving over what we had seen uh, in recent weeks. Our deaths were decreasing in the county um, since about mid-February as well. They've kind of plateaued off the last few days, so we're kind of concerned about that and we're watching that carefully. Um, but it had been very um, encouraging as well to see folks um, not being hospitalized and not dying from this um, in recent weeks. Uh, we're still concerned with the variants in the community. We've had uh, additional reports of more variant cases in the state, and so we're watching that um, very carefully because it has been increasing across the state with the UK variant and the other ones. So we're still uh, um, we're still very encouraged, although they're watching. We're watching carefully, uh, particularly during spring break and after the All Star Game. Uh, we've seen some you know reports of quite a bit of large gatherings, and so we're hoping that between those large gatherings and the variants, we don't see another uptick in cases. So. We're going to keep our fingers crossed and hope that everybody continues to practice the three W's and help us keep driving those rates down. Uh, also wanted to alert you that we're still doing uh, a, quite a bit of free testing in Douglas County at the Woody Fight Senior Center and Kingdom Builders uh, Ministry and at the Epi Center. So uh, individuals who still need to get tested during this time uh, can have access to that. We still are seeing results coming back in 24 to 36 hours. Um, I will tell you, commissioners, though, I may need to uh, look at reducing the volume of appointments because we're tremendously underbooked on those testing appointments. And so just to be good stewards of the funds, we may want to pull that back. But I want to give it another week or so after spring break and let's see how that works. Uh, but we may see that reduce just a little bit, not completely, but uh, may reduce the number of hours and test uh, appointments that we have available. Now let's talk about the vaccine, which is what's on everybody's mind and what we're so excited about. Uh, so far, we, it looks like we've done, had about 21,000 shots provided in Douglas County by all providers. Uh, that's about 13,000 first dose um, and 9,000 second doses. Of those, 21,000, about 8,000 of them, or about 40% of them, have been provided by public health. Um, and so we're pleased to be able to do that. Um, if we look across all counties and all providers, we're seeing that about 15,500 Douglas residents have been vaccinated. Keep in mind that you do not have to be vaccinated in your home county. So many Douglas County residents may be going to Carroll County or Paulding or to Cobb County to get vaccinated, and that's completely acceptable. Um, we're just trying to track to see how many residents are fully vaccinated. Um, we're hoping that you'll start to be able to see those numbers on our DPH website um, soon. Right now, you can see how many uh, vaccines have been given in the county, but we're trying to get it down to where we could see how many Douglas residents have been vaccinated in any county across the state. So more to come on that. Uh, we're really very excited to have moved our operation from uh, our Douglas Public Health Center over to Arbor Place Mall. Uh, so thankful for Elm Creek Real Estate, who owns the Sears property, Arbor Place Mall, the city of Douglasville, and Douglas County government for helping to set up that site and providing the funds for the tents and the freezers and everything that we needed at that location. As I mentioned to you before, we have the capacity at that location to do about 1,000 vaccinations a day. 
Um, we are not at that capacity yet just because of vaccine supply coming into the state and coming into the county. But the minute that vaccine starts to increase, uh, we're ready to go. We've also been um, trying to pay particular attention to offering events in the community that could be particular to Douglas County residents. So for example, this weekend, we vaccinated about 1,000 Douglas County school system staff um, at the Arbor Place Mall location, went off like clockwork. It was a great event, went extremely smoothly, and we got a lot of our uh, faculty and staff vaccinated with their first dose. We also just today completed our first Johnson & Johnson senior event at the Woody Fight Senior Center. So I think we did about 200 seniors over there and it was our first opportunity to have some jo uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine in hand. We haven't gotten a lot of that, but we had enough to do a senior event with you all today. Um, and then I think we did another Lithia Springs senior event, but I think that was with a Moderna vaccine. And so we'll be going back soon to do their second doses. We have opened up new appointments weekly for the past three weeks. Um, and I'll have to do a shout out to Dr. Gilchrist. I can tell you when we give Douglas Senior Services a list and uh, of appointments and allow them to book them, they are gone like clockwork. They have done a tremendous job in helping us book those appointments for Douglas Seniors. Um, and it's just been a tremendous partnership and we're so thankful for Dr. Gilchrist and her staff. I will tell you, however, when we've opened up the website, uh, we have a new registration system and it's been working very smoothly, but when we open up Douglas appointments, they have taken a while longer than we expected to fill. Uh, normally appointments are gone within uh, 30 minutes or so, um, but it took us about a day and a half to book the Douglas appointments that we had opened this past week. And so uh, we'll be working more with uh, City of Douglasville and Douglas County Communications um, to make sure we get the word out when those appointments book because I particularly want Douglas residents to book those appointments um, as quickly as possible and not have them for folks all over the state, even though they're absolutely welcome to come, but our priority certainly is Douglas residents at that location. We're hopeful for more vaccines soon. Uh, we keep hearing that it's coming and we're, we still are kind of like kids at Christmas out at the side of the road waiting for those deliveries every week. Um, we know that every provider around the state is working under capacity right now, that they certainly could vaccinate more folks than uh, they have vaccine for. I think Dr. Meemark and I are on the phone almost daily uh, with the state trying to advocate for our local providers to get vaccines so that they can get our Douglas residents vaccinated. Um, and it just, they can't give us what they don't have. And so we're anxiously working and trying to activate some of our federal partners to see if we can get more vaccine into the county. Remember that eligibility opened up this week. Uh, that's also exciting news. Um, if you didn't know, in the past, healthcare workers and residents and staff of long-term care facilities, public safety workers, all of those folks were eligible before. But effective um, last week, we opened it up to educators and their staff, not just folks who are teachers, but also any staff that support our public and private schools, uh, all the way from childcare uh, educators up through private and public K through 12. So um, that's been exciting to be able to get more of those folks in in our appointments to vaccinate them. And then this week we opened it up to um, individuals 55 and older. So that opened up a whole nother group of folks across the state that could get vaccinated before it was 65 and older. So we've lowered the age requirement. We also opened it up to adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their caregivers, parents of children with complex medical conditions, individuals with disabilities, and also individuals age 16 and older with certain medical conditions that increase their risk for severe illness from COVID-19. Um, 
So we have a new website that's open. You can go in and you can register even if you are not in an eligible category. It shows you across the state various locations that you could register for vaccination. Um, if there are no open appointments, it will still allow you to register and then it will ping you back on your computer uh, to let you know when appointments open up so that you could then go in and click and, and select an appointment. Um, we will continue to work with Douglas Senior Services and other partners to help make sure to vaccinate or to set up appointments for those folks who don't have easy access to a computer um, and, and need someone to help them over the phone to be able to do that. Um, I also, uh, this to me is the best news, uh, I have to tell you, is some of the new CDC guidelines that allow some more uh, freedom for those folks who are fully vaccinated. So if you are fully vaccinated, and that means that it's two weeks since your last, since your uh, final dose of COVID vaccine, whether that was a two dose series or a one dose Johnson and Johnson. So two weeks to develop immunity um, that you now can gather indoors with other fully vaccinated people without distancing or wearing masks. So other healthcare workers or public safety workers can gather with their coworkers without wearing masks or distancing. That you can gather indoors with unvaccinated people from another household. So I have to tell you, this is where I get really excited because just imagine our seniors who've been able to get fully vaccinated now, right? We started with them in January. If those seniors are fully vaccinated, they can now meet with and hug their children and their grandchildren and be able to spend time with them. And I think that truly is a game changer in our community. Um, our folks have, our seniors have been um, isolated this past year and uh, they need hugs um, and need us with them. So I'm excited about that. The other is that if you uh, are fully vaccinated and you are then around someone who tests positive, you no longer have to quarantine or get tested if you're fully vaccinated. So from a workforce standpoint, that's a, a big game changer that we're able to keep our businesses open uh, if their folks are vaccinated. So I'm excited about that. I, I would say I can't ever end yet with a presentation to you all without asking you content to continue to focus on the three W's, um, washing your hands, watching your distance, wearing your mask in public. Um, if you are not fully vaccinated, uh, avoid the large gathering still, stay home if you're sick. And then I have to say right now, please get vaccinated with any vaccine that you have access to. We now in the community have Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. And so all of them are tremendously effective in preventing hospitalizations and death. And so I would, if it were me and I had access to any of those vaccines, I would certainly do it in a heartbeat. So please make a uh, check and see if you're eligible and then access those vaccines. You can always visit our Cobb and Douglas Public Health website and the DPH website for more information. And I'll stop there, Chairwoman. I think you're muted. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Deputy Director Crossman, for your great presentation. We wanted the Board of Commissioners to, to listen and also to allow our citizens to digest this information as well. You brought some game-changing news to both the Board of Commissioners and the citizens. And certainly I want to just maybe just extend just a few minutes, and I didn't know if my board had questions for you. If they did, I wanted to just extend a moment, and then we're going to move on with our agenda. Board of Commissioners, I know this is good music to your ears. Do you have any comments or questions for Ms. Crossman? Okay. Yes, Chairman Jones. Yes, okay, Commissioner Carthen. Good evening, Ms. Crossman. Hello. I sent an email to you on last Thursday, March 11th, and some of the questions you did address yes. tonight, there were still a couple that were not addressed. Um, the amount of non-county citizens that are being vaccinated, do you have an account of that? Are you all actually um, keeping up with that based on zip code, if you are? And is that accessible to the county? How can we access the data that you all are utilizing? So 
So really good question. And thank you, Commissioner. I used your questions to format most of my presentation. So that was really helpful. Thank you. Um, so we know that about 21,000 shots have been given by all providers in the community. And about 15,000 of those have been to Douglas residents. Okay. So we know that there are quite a few still that are going, uh, uh, folks who are coming into the county who are not residents. Um, but we want to make sure it's a statewide campaign. And so okay. it's hard for us. The best way I have to manage that is to um, do some of these targeted events like we did with Douglas County school teacher or school system and with the Douglas senior services to make sure that we're vaccinating as many Douglas residents as we can. Got you. Um, I'm excited to see and hear and read about how successful it was for the Douglas County School System and that the nurses were involved to help wow. administer the shots. I think that was absolutely genius and I love, I love that. I absolutely love that. My I was question. out there for most of the day on Saturday uh -huh. and our staff just had the best time together. The Douglas County School System staff were just spectacular to work with and we really appreciated. And it was almost like a, a homecoming event or something. Every time a teacher would pull up, they'd say it was like they hadn't seen their colleagues in ages. Right. And it was a real celebration day. So we appreciated that. No, I think that was great. My question to you is, will we also be utilizing some of our EMS techs and, and, um, and faculty and staff here to help us in Douglas County or will, will that all be privatized? I think we talked about it in December or January when we were appropriating, but- You mean about our, um, our like our Douglas Fire folks being able yes. to help do events? Yes. So I'd love to be able to have their help and do some larger events out at Arbor Place Mall. I'll certainly talk to Jason and, um, and Scott about that. Okay. And I know we are waiting on supply, but I just wanted to at least put that out there so that once we get it, we have, you know, staff and, and everybody on board to, to help disseminate that as soon as possible. Because I think we would all love by 4th of July to, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To, to, to be in the state that you just talked about where we could, you know, congregate with our, yep. at least with our family members. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, and my, my third question is, uh, is there somewhere that we can access the data? Like how is the state, you know, holding that data? How is it being disseminated so that we as the board of commissioners can make those decisions as to when we start to open things back up? Because that's one of the questions we always get, you know, when will y'all start to open things back up? So uh, it's a really good question. And right now, if you go to the Georgia DPH website, you can see on their vaccine dashboard, the number of vaccinations who, that have been given in Douglas County. You can see it for the state, but also by county level. What's not on the dashboard right now is some of the information that I just told you about how many Douglas County residents right. have been served across all counties and all providers. Um, and so they're telling us at DPH that that's coming on that dashboard. Um, and so we're excited to see that too, because I do want to know how many vaccines have been given in Douglas County. That's helpful. But I also really want to know how many Douglas residents have gotten back. Yes. Exactly. And that, that's so I, I think that's coming. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is it. Thank you so much for um, providing us with the information with that. Chairman Jones, I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. And I believe I saw Dr. Meemark on, on the line, and I just want to acknowledge her. I know she uh, didn't, uh, she wasn't here for a presentation, but thank you, Dr. Meemark, as well, uh, if you're here. I thought I saw you join us earlier. And then also, again, Lisa, thank you so thank much you. for your amazing presentation. And I believe I have a question from our Vice Chairman for you, yes. our Deputy Director. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Deputy Director, uh, pleasure um, to hear you. I'm glad you're here, and that was good news. Um, I, I felt it all in your voice. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So, question to piggyback off on um, um, Madam Carthen, because at, at at the end of the day, we're trying to get the, the herd human. Um, what do they call it? Herd what? Herd immunity. Immunity. All right. Yes. That's what we're going for. Right. <laughs> that's the objective. Right. Everything else sort of leads to that point where we can get to sort of get a, a majority of them. Uh, vaccinated. So if 21,000 um, vaccinations have been done, 
and 15,000 were based on the residents that are here in the county. Mm -hmm. That's about what, 75% um, of that number. Mm -hmm. um, there are what, about 125,000 residents give or take. Let's say it's 100,000 adults. Um, that's about what, 15%. I, I, when do we see the trajectory going? I, I mean, this summer? Well, I think that the, the plan is that federally more and more vaccine will be coming down here over the next few months. Yep. And as I said, we have a lot of providers who are ready and they're on go to be able to speed up and do a lot more vaccinations. If you look at the trajectory of current increases in vaccination, like on the DPH website, it'll show you daily how many vaccines have been given. Yep. Um, the tra trajectory is about like this. It's really a high uh, slope where okay. we've been increasing. So that's great news, but we're not there yet. And I think we're going to need to get to about 80%, right, or somewhere around there to hit herd immunity. Yep. Um, so more and more, we're expecting some opportunities to open up this week for some more folks. I, I see it just opening and, uh, more over the next few days and the next few weeks. Um, and then my fingers are crossed for more and more vaccines so that we can just get those shots in arms as fast as it comes in. I got you. All yeah, right. This is, uh, this is Dr. Meemark. If I could yes, chime in a little bit. Well, yes. I apologize. Thank you, Dr. Meemark. I'm not, yeah, I'm not live with you all, but I'm on my phone. But um, that, um, you know, also remember that um, children are not um, – um, approved yet for the vaccines, and so we we did hear news that um, they're they're being studied um, um, and looked at for um, safety in children. So Pfizer just does go down to 16, but it's the only one, and so that's a, a pretty good chunk of our population. And you know, and we're running into. Um, um, some vaccine hesitancy as well. And so um, it's really important that we all do our parts. And now that it has opened up to a lot more folks to get vaccinated, um, we do need, um, you know, our community leaders and um, and whatever help that we can get to, um, you know, is to spread the word. And so when these vaccines um, come out and they're really going to start flowing, the Biden administration is is sending down a whole lot more vaccines in the next few weeks um, that we, we all just do our part to get as many folks vaccinated. Because remember, if um, um, if you don't want to take the shot um, and it's too many of us that don't take the shot, then we, we're not going to reach herd immunity. And so we do got to make sure that we all do our part in that and, and um, be able to get as many vaccinated as possible. No, I, and I appreciate that and welcome. Um, thank you for that comment. And again, to your point, uh, a distance, there is a difference between hesitancy and resistance, right? And so um, how, and a lot of that is going to be accomplished through education, which you guys have done a wonderful job of, of educating the people, but at the end of the day, um, they have to make their choice, but we need to make sure we're, we get in front of them and get them the information they need. So to my last point, um, so I'm, I'm back to, I'm always, you know, I'm all, all things Douglas. So um, do you keep up with how many people outside of Douglas? In other words, if I can't find a location, I get people are, they can't find your county, so they're coming here. How many people here are going somewhere else? In other words, is there an aggregate view of Douglas County based on zip code. So to Madam Carthen, I want to extend that question. How, what, what percentage of Douglas is actually overall immunized, even if they didn't do it here? Do you know? Yes. So, um, so it looks like, uh, again, that about 15,500 Douglas residents have received at least their first dose yeah. to date regardless of the provider or the county that they went to for that dose. That's what I need to know. Okay, I got it. Then, then leave it there. You answered the question. I wasn't clear on that. So I appreciate it. You got the, our, our, our most vulnerable, our seniors, and um, obviously the youth. But I, I still didn't make the 55 mark, though. I'm off. So I'm still, I guess I'm still in line. So I guess I'll wait my turn. But duly noted, thank you so much for um, um, your support and what you do. Madam Chair, so, you Commissioner, I would Chair, say that... Go ahead, Dr. I was going to say, Vice Chair, I will, I will give you your vaccine myself when we're ready. <laughs> gotcha. I'm going to hold you to that, doctor. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam and Chair. And Commissioner, I mentioned the um, new DPH website that you can go to register. Yep. Um, you certainly can still go to register on that even if you're not eligible yet. Yep. Um, and it'll tell you that you're not eligible yet, but it'll keep you in line. It'll keep you so that it'll ping uh, and let you know when you do become eligible, and then you could schedule an appointment anywhere across the state. Ooh, that's neat. 
Mm -hmm. so that was good. That, that's a nice touch. I, I didn't hear that nuance, but that's that's good to know. I'll make sure I bring that my town hall. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again, um, Deputy Director, for your presentation today. We appreciate you coming in on the short Absolutely. notice. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, yes, that's only one question, and and just uh, just want to give kudos uh, on a job well done. You guys are doing an excellent job at keeping this uh, thing moving in Douglas County. So, but my question though is, I noticed you know we've got uh, three vaccines, if I'm not mistaken. With that being stated, how do you kind of keep in line with the one vaccine, the Johnson and Johnson versus the two vaccines? Kind of how you kind of educating the public and getting the message out to those guys to make sure that this is the round of this round. Now, the vaccines are the vaccines, but I mean, how do we want to keep that part of it, you know, in motion or, or? So really good question, Commissioner, because it is a lot more complicated than most folks might imagine for our clinical staff to assure, right, that every person gets the second dose with the brand that they got in the first right. dose. And so the way that we are doing that is, first of all, we're um, using our, um, we're converting right now to Pfizer because we feel like Pfizer is more prevalent um, and able, to, we can increase our volumes faster if we use Pfizer than if we used Moderna, which was what we were using before. And thanks to you guys, we were able to buy the ultra cold freezer um, and that allows us to get Pfizer in. So we are converting over to Pfizer and we're making sure that we only give Pfizer on on certain days. And for example, we may go to Moderna Mondays, right, where if somebody needs a Moderna second dose that we know that we'll book them just for a Monday and they can come in for a Moderna Monday. And that would be the only vaccine we give that day um, so that there's not the confusion. And then we've used the Johnson & Johnson, the small amount that we have, we use the Johnson & Johnson for our outreach events. So when we go out for a particular event, it's a one and done, and people know that they're signing up for a particular event that would just be used for Johnson & Johnson. Got it. If we find that we get high volume of Johnson & Johnson vaccine, we'll do just like we did for Moderna Monday. We'll have a Johnson & Johnson Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and let folks just sign up for that Friday to come in for that one dose. Are you Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. But are you advertising it that way, though? That is, this is a Johnson & Johnson Friday and a Moderna Monday? Or how, are you doing it that way? Or you just kind of like show up and surprise and this is what you get? Um, for now, we've only been using the Johnson & Johnson on our outreach events, and we have been, for example, telling senior services that we would be using Johnson & Johnson, and so when they communicate to the seniors to make appointments, they're told that in advance, so that it's not just a surprise, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. that's, that's okay. I mean, I, I mean, I, you're fine. You're fine. I'm not... I'm not trying to trip you up there. You really trick no, no. <laughs> it is tricky, though, to be yeah. able to um, juggle that many d that type. And so that's why we're trying to get out of the Moderna business and mm -hmm. let other providers have that who don't have the ultra cold storage. Right. Um, so that they can have a higher volume of the Moderna vaccine. We can just give Pfizer at our mass site right. and then potentially have separate days or events that are just Johnson and Johnson. What you're accepting and the state. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dr. Meemark, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, well, I was gonna um, also say, you know, we've also, we're switching to the state registration system too, which also complicates things. I don't think that they actually say it on there. So um, I appreciate um, bringing up this point because we, we've only stuck to one vaccine thus far, but if we do get to the point where we add in another one, which we hope we don't because it's really complicated, but um, it might be a good idea that we can put it posted on the website, you know, the schedule, say, okay, well, on this day, Johnson & Johnson will be offered at um, – Arbor Place, but the problem is there's a little bit of a disconnect. Once they go from there and they sign up, they'll have to remember that's a Johnson and Johnson day. I don't think it puts it on the state site, but we'll take a look. We'll take a look at that just to increase awareness of it. And I'll put it in my PSAs too with um, with Mr. Martin when we do those. To try to remind folks. Got it. And, and the other question to that though, but we'll accepting any and all vaccines that the state kind of give you guys, right? Or or we being specific, like we stated, we only want the 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 Pfizer or, or only, I mean, are we accepting any and all or, or selectively? 
so we were um, asking just for Moderna until we got the freezer in, right? right? And then we said, okay, le- Dr. Meemar noticed that we were um, having a lot more competition for the Moderna that was coming into the state. And so she said, you know what, let's convert over to Pfizer only, mm-hmm. right? Because we think we can get a higher volume of Pfizer vaccine than we could Moderna. Okay. So we are just asking for now some second doses of Moderna because we will certainly meet, provide second doses to everybody that we did first doses with. So we're asking for second doses of Moderna, but all our first doses will convert to Pfizer. um, And we ask for that unless we're doing outreach events or unless we see the opportunity for a lot more Johnson & Johnson. It's certainly a dance, Commissioner. Yeah, yeah, so we we asked for we asked for a hundred percent of our capacity that we can do every week, and so and we only get fifty percent of our vaccines. So uh, we do ask for the moon <laughs> each time. Well, at least you're amongst the stars. But but so <laughs> let, let let me let me ask. So so with that, so now when the second dose come back around, though, depending upon where you guys are, that's where it's going to get a little trickier. I mean. With the with the Douglas Countyans who kind of came your way for the that first dose, so we've got track of that. We've okay. got them in our system. Um, every time somebody gets vaccinated with us, we know we enter them into grits right into the Georgia Registry for Immunization Transactions, um, mm-hmm. and so we're able to see who got their first dose with us mm-hmm. and be able to provide that service to them the second time. So in the event that they went with a second dose at the State Farm Arena of some sort, how do you track that to, to not hold off one that we're trying to hold out for that second dose for this individual, but he or she decided to go elsewhere because he took a little bit longer than normal, so. So um, across Georgia, all providers are encouraged to provide the second dose to all of their patients where they provided them with the first dose. Okay. Um, And so all Georgians are encouraged to go back to that first dose provider because a lot of the supply comes into those providers based on the first doses that were given. Got it. Um, Now, that being said, that if somebody drove down to Brunswick, Georgia, because they were frantic and that's where they could get an appointment, Mm -hmm. and they drove from Douglas County to Brunswick to get their first vaccination, and now they're going, "Could could I come to public health. We're trying to meet that need, but um, if you went to Carroll County to get your vaccination, uh, your first dose, we'd like you to go back to Carroll County to get your second dose or to ABC Pharmacy. But if I showed up on your doorstep looking for the second dose and didn't get my first dose from you, do you encourage me to go back to Walmart? We do. We do encourage you to go back to Walmart. If you are a Douglas County resident and either you've been turned away by that first dose provider because they don't have any vaccine and uh, or you've traveled across the state to get your first dose vaccine, we are trying to squeeze you in to okay. give you your second dose. Okay. Because okay. Our most important thing is to make sure you get that second dose within the recommended window of 28 uh, to 42 days of Moderna or 21 to 42 days for Pfizer. Got it. But if I went to the State Farm Arena and they gave it to me on that end, would that record show up on your end to kind of keep track to say, okay, Commissioner Mitchell is done? Or I'm still out there, you're looking for that second dose from you, but I've already got it in, in Atlanta. If I understand your question, Dr. Meemark, you may have to help me. Part of it is, you know, you get those first dose cards, right? You get the, when you get vaccinated, we give you a card that shows where I, you I, got vaccinated. I haven't and, been blessed to even get that far, so, but, but I, didn't, I haven't seen, okay, but well, go ahead. <laughs> so we give you a card that has all of the details about what type of vaccine you got, where yeah. you got it, and when you got it. Yeah. And so you need to be able to provide that card to whoever gives you your second dose. Got it. Okay. 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 Well, okay. I got you now. So that, that makes a little bit more sense then. I got you. And we okay. can look it up in the GRIT system if there's ever a question. But all the data is not from the state, is not kind of somewhere centrally located to kind of. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. It is in the GRIT system. The GRITS is the Georgia Registry for Immunization Transactions and Services. Um, right. And so anywhere you go to get an immunization of any kind, including COVID, it gets deposited into that GRIT system. Mm -hmm. So if you got a flu shot at Walgreens one year and then a uh, you went to your doctor and he wanted to check to see if you got your vaccination, he yeah. can look it up in GRITS and see where you got your, all of your vaccinations okay. so right. that they aren't duplicated or, um, or lagged. Got it, got it. Okay, and, and speaking of the freezer, so tell me how the freezer is coming along. It, it's oh, it's up. in. What, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's in. It's working. It's it's got vaccine. We're all we're pumped. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and, now and, I do realize it's a little geeky to get excited <laughs> over a freezer, but you know it is what it is. It's been a hard year. <laughs> and 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 and, and I, I know you guys will put it to use and make sure that it it it, it does what it needs to do to kind of make sure that these guys you know get the shots that they need to get the shots. And, the and absolutely, it is uh, ready for much more vaccine than it's keeping cold right now. Got it. Um, and 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 I truly believe. I think you made this statement earlier that uh, President Biden will definitely be sending out um, a boatload of vaccines in the coming days when trying to reach that uh, May date that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear, but, you know, um, but so you guys are ready because my, my major you say, concern. Commissioner, we're, we're saying bring it on. <laughs> Truly, we've got the staff ready. We've got the everything's ready. And I would say that on behalf of a lot of our providers right across the state, we have providers in Douglas County that easily could give much more vaccine than they're getting uh, vaccinations than they're getting vaccine for right. uh, because we're trying to advocate for them to get more and i i would say across the county bring it on because we have a lot of people really willing and ready to step up to provide it okay well, well again uh, we're glad as a board to have provided all the tools you needed to kind of get you and Dr. Mimar, you know, kind of what you guys needed. So uh, we're here and uh, we're here for the citizens of Douglas County. And I know that that's what you guys are here for, uh, to provide that type of service. So continue the great work and let's uh, let's get 100 percent of Douglas Countyans done. And Absolutely. It, and thank it, you so much for the funding. It has really enabled us to get out at um, Arbor Place Mall and set up with the tents and the cones and everything. And then Arbor Place Mall and Elm Creek Realty that owns Sears has been tremendously generous right. to us um, and has let us use that space for no charge. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's been huge because then we can turn that into whatever we need to to provide the service. Got it. Well, again, thank you guys. And I really appreciate you guys and what you guys are doing. And thank you again. And Madam Chair, I'll yield back. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. And thank you so much, uh, Deputy Director Crossman. Board of Commissioners, if there are no further remarks, we're going to move on to our, our agenda. And again, thank you for the short notice, Lisa. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we have the approval of our minutes tonight. You have, um, I hope you've had an opportunity to review the commission minute um, meeting minutes of March 2nd, 2021 in the work session minutes of March 1st, 2021 and the executive session minutes of March 1st, 2021. And uh, after the review, are there any ad additions, deletions, or corrections that need to be made? No, ma'am. Okay. Being none, the minutes stand approved. Board of Commissioners also just wanted just a, just a little small adjustment in our uh, agenda tonight. Uh, certainly at your pleasure. Wanted uh, uh, tab number eight to come before us because I understand uh, Mr. Parkley has an, an engagement he has to attend tonight, and I wanted to just shift the schedule. And certainly, it's your pleasure. And Mr. Parkley, are you uh, available? Are you on the line? Yes, I am here. Okay, I'm going to read this, and then the board commissioners, we will allow uh, Mr. Parkley to chime in and give us a, uh, an update regarding this resolution. Um, tab number eight is resolution. It's a resolution approving the application of Project Arla for participation in the Douglas County Tax Savings Incentive Plan. This item was tabled on March 2nd, 2021. And before you uh, say anything, uh, uh, Chris Parker, and I apologize, I need to call for a motion to untable this item. For the commissioners, do we have a motion to untable uh, a resolution approving the application of Project Arla? 
So moved. moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Board of Commissioners, any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Now, since this item has been untabled, I will try it again and see what the response will be from my board of commissioners and my colleagues. A resolution approving the application of Project Arla for participation in the Douglas County Tax Savings Incentive Plan. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. End of discussion, Board of Commissioners. We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. And I should have said, uh, prepare to cast your electronic votes. So our citizens will know we're voting from our computers at home. Technology has really been impressive during this uh, pandemic. We learned a lot of things that we can do with the technology. Yes. Clerk, and you will render the yeah. final results. Yes, ma'am. Um, Commissioner Robinson, did you? Affirmative. Thank you. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote to Board of Commissioners and the motion carries. So thank you and congratulations to the for the application on Project Arla. All right, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Pumphrey. We, we're gonna move on to, uh, we have a public hearing, which is tab number four, and it's approval for an on-premise beer, wine, alcohol license, Chicago Avenue Cafe, and the licensee is Marilyn Gil Gil Guilty at 376 Maxim Road, Suite B, Austell, Georgia, 30168. And we have our own manager, uh, Ron Roberts, here tonight to, to expound on this uh, public hearing. Ron, you have the floor. Y yes, ma'am. How are you doing tonight? Um, mm -hmm. Well, I just got a phone with uh, Ms. Guilty. She's having some trouble getting on, but we have a completed uh, uh, package from, from this applicant. She went through the RAS training back in July. Um, you, you already had the location, um, um, so I'm going to get her on the phone. Uh, she's going to have to join us by phone because uh, we've had trouble with, with this all day. Hold on one second, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Guilty, are you on? I won't put you on speaker, okay? Hold on one second. I apologize for the technical components. We've been trying to get this for a while. Okay. Are you there? Okay, Ms. Guilty, you're speaking to the Board of Commissioners, um, and this is in regard to your public hearing tonight. I um, uh, just want to make sure that you were uh, participating. Um, we will, uh, I, I kind of, when I was getting on the phone, I want to make sure that we uh, we open the public hearing and, and everything. So she's here. Did When I was calling her, did you, you already did that, right? Did you open the public hearing? No, I, I haven't opened it yet. Okay. I'm getting ready to do that. Okay. Okay, okay that sounds good. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Board of Commissioners, it's your pleasure. I'm um, preparing to open this uh, public hearing. Citizens of Douglas County, this public hearing is now open. Um, is there anyone here to speak for um, this approval of the premise beer, wine, alcohol license? Is there anyone here to speak against this, this request for the premise beer? wine alcohol license. Okay, being none, this public hearing is now closed. So I will go back and I'll certainly, um, Ron Roberts, our manager, do you have any other questions before I call the question? Okay. I don't have any, uh, questions. Did y'all have any questions of, of Mrs. Guilty while she's on the phone? Okay, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions for Ms. Guilty before I proceed with the calling the question? Not at this time, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Guilty. We appreciate you. Thank All right. You. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve an on-premise beer and wine alcohol license uh, 
for Maryland Guilty at 376 Maxim Road, Suite B, Austell, Georgia, 30168. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond. Oh, please prepare to vote accordingly, right, Lisa? There we go. Please prepare to cast your votes. Affirmative, Madam Clerk. Chairman, motion um, passed 5 0. Okay, thank you. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much for the commissioners. We're going to move on to tab number five, which is under our new business reappointment of Roseanne Foley uh, to the Cemetery Preservation Commission effective immediately. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Affirmative. Clerk, you heard Vice Chairman's response. He said affirmative. Yes, ma'am. I'm just waiting on uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you. Motion carries 5-0. Mm -hmm. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, board. We're going to move on to tab number six, authorization to enter into a, into a consent order and final judgment pursuant to a condemnation proceeding claim on parcel ID 0129015195 located at 2710 Highway 92 in connection with the Leaf uh, Road Phase 2 widening project P1000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Chairman, motion carries 5-0. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote, uh, Board of Commissioners, and the motion carries. We're going to move on to tab number seven. Tab number seven is authorization for the chairman to execute an employment contract with Sharon Subedan as county administration uh, county administrator. I apologize. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Affirmative. Motion carries 5-0. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're going to move on. We already covered tab number eight, Board of Commissioners. So this moves us right into the uh, consent agenda. Please be mindful that all items are subject to final legal review. I'll start with tab number nine. Tab number nine is authorization to apply for a CJCC grant for the state court DUI drug court program in the amount of $131,100 and with a match of $14,566. And the match will be from the director's salary and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. 
Tab number 10 is authorization to accept an emergency management performance grant from Georgia Emergency Management in the amount of $39,721. Amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 11, authorization to accept the ACCG Georgia County Internship Program, which is GCIP grant providing funding for one internship in the Human Resources Department and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 12 is authorization to approve the Violence Against Women Act, which is the VAWA grant in the amount of $50,000 with no match for 2021 and have the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 13 is authorization to change the name on two car allowance agreements for Roland Turner and Amber Robinson and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 14, authorization for chairman to sign fiscal designation form uh, for the Family Connections Partnership Grant, Douglas Core. Tab number 15, authorization of preliminary plat for PACES Estate Phase 2. Tab number 16, authorization to deny claims for property tax refunds as recommended by the Board of Assessors and Tax Commissioner. Tab number 17, is approval of tax commissioner's request to write down the tax bills for the following list of uncollectible and delinquent tax bills for the following business personal property tax bills and tax years and amend the digest accordingly. We have account P82185 and that year is 2012. The amount is uh, $1,272.27. We have P9610 at uh, the year is 2008 at $1,797.92. P9610 again, which occurred in 2009, that amount is $8,352.83. We have P82136 that occurred in 2013, the amount is $5,371.32. And P78802 occurred in 2009 is $1,295.71. And we have P65730 occurred in 2008, and the amount is $1,451.07. And finally, finally, P8985, the tax year was 2011, and the amount is $46,781 dollars and 92 cents. We'll move on to tab number 18. Tab number 18 is authorization to approve renewal of the Johnson Controls Incorporation Plan Services Agreement for the Boundary Waters Aquatic Center for the term of May 1st, 2021 through April 30th, 2022 at a cost of $7,801 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Tab number 19, authorization to purchase of right-of-way and easements from parcel number 00250150138 located on Stewart Mill Parkway in connection with the Stewart Mill Road and Reynolds Road intersection improvement project and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 20, authorization to enter into a final settlement agreement with stipulations or consent order and final judgment in connection with condemnation proceedings for required right-of-way and easements of parcel ID 08061820069, located at 1636 Lee Road in connection with the Lee Road Phase Two widening project, which is P1000-4428, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 21 is authorization to accept the unit price bid for Wayne Davis Concrete on solicitation 21-001 to provide concrete pro products to the county for use on maintenance and construction projects for a one-year period and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 22, authorization to approve prime constructions change order number two for increasing the volume of the septic tank systems for the Bill R. Park and Fair Play Park concession buildings as required by the State Health Department at a cost at a total cost of $180,490.24 to be funded through the 2016 SPLOST funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. And finally, tab number 23. 
authorization to approve the CARES Act Technology Fund request for a software upgrade for the GIS department and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. The funds are allocated for the CARES Act, Tech, uh, Act Technology Fund for the next three years. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any particular um, tab before I call, go any further. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Board of Commissioners, please prepare to cast your votes. Not permanent. Okay, thank you. Okay. Chairman, motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. We're gonna move on next to our approval of our expenses, which is tab number 24, 25, 26, and 27. Board of Commissioners, you had an opportunity to review your expenses. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second, but please, please prepare to cast your votes. Excuse me. Affirmative. Chairman, motion carries 5-0. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Uh, Board of Commissioners, certainly it's your pleasure. I would love for you all to, if you have, uh, I certainly as my colleagues, if you have something coming up in your prospective districts, if you want to make some announcements to our citizens before I yield to our uh, uh, communications director, Rick Martin. So I certainly want to open the floor for our commissioners if you have any announcements uh, that you would like to make. Any? Any announcements, Board of Commissioners? Okay. Well, can I'll. I yes, you can. I see. Okay. Rick, I don't want to take your thunder, but can I? Let me do District Two. <laughs> yes. Go. Absolutely, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, to to all citizens in, in District Two, uh, our Spring Town Hall uh, has been scheduled on the books since the beginning of the year. It will be Saturday next, Saturday, September twenty seventh, at um, twelve noon. Um, it is going to be simul, um, simulcast. It obviously is a virtual, but I'll be being live from 230 Thornton Road. Um, it'll be li limited seating, but we will have um, in-person citizens. And we're going to continue with our, our, our conversation regarding our listening posts. Continue to sort of hear from you regarding a couple of things. We've got an agenda that's going to be focused on a legislative update by Representative Kimberly Alexander. Uh, we're going to have Mr. Linus Savage going to talk about the strategic plan and our long-term capital. And as well, we're going to have Mr. David Good there talking about our sploss and where we need to go. I look forward to for you guys all participating. Those who can show up in person, we understand. But again, you can always see this simulcast live on um, our Facebook Live. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you so much. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, can we get that data again from Vice Chairman Robertson? Absolutely. Saturday, March 27th, 2021 at 12 noon at a SEER, 230 Thornton Road. Okay. And refreshments will be served. Thank you kindly, sir. All right. All right. I thought I heard something different, though, but I'll yield. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell and uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Commissioner Carthen, I love that when we can turn, when the cameras come on, I know that's my cue. <laughs> Commissioner Carthen, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Uh, to the citizens of Douglas County, on this Thursday, March 18th at 6 p.m., we will have the District 3 Citizens Input. That is a virtual discussion where we are looking forward to hearing your input as to what you want to see Douglas County look like. So again, that is 6 p.m. on March 18th. If you would like to have input on that meeting, 
we would love to send you a Zoom invite. So just email my office at tcarthen at co.douglas.ga.us. Um, it will be in the announcements and it will be in the Douglas County happenings. And you can also go to our celebratedouglascounty.com um, website for more information. I will also be holding in celebration of Women's um, Women's Month here in March. On March 26th, we will be holding a, I'm sorry, March 25th. Christy's going to get me if I don't get this date right. March 26th, because she's been working on this. So March 26th, from 12 to 1 o'clock, we will be holding a Douglas County Women's um, Business Owners Pop-Up Shop. That also is virtual, and we would love to invite the public. We have several guest speakers, about 16 businesses that have signed up. We will have distinguished panelists of women business owners who are looking forward to sharing their insight and sharing what they do in Douglas County. Um, if you'd like to be a part of that, there is still time to do so. You can email my office, again, tcarthen at co.douglas.ga.us or go to our Celebrate Douglas County website and to get more information. Um, but we look forward to, to seeing you on both of those events. Um, we wanna make sure that we allow all the women in Douglas County who do have a business and you want to uh, put it forward to um, the really all over, because if it's a Zoom account, it, it, it goes all over. So you're just not limited to here in Douglas County, but we wanna make sure that we put you front and center. We know that COVID has hit a lot of us small business owners, including myself, but we wanna make sure that we extend an opportunity to you to let people know what you are doing in the county. So if you would like to participate in that, please reach out to me. Um, again, it will be Friday, March 26th, from 12 to 1 p.m. and there will be giveaways. So even if you don't have a business, you wanna sign up. Um, thank you so much, Chairman Jones. I look forward to it. I yield the floor. All right, I look forward to attending both events. All right, we're gonna move on and uh, certainly any other comments or remarks from our board before I yield to our communications director. Communications director, you have the floor. Yes, Chairman Jones, just to add on to announcements, uh, free COVID-19 testing is being offered at Derelict Park, 2171 Mac Road in Douglasville. It's drive-through testing Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. No appointment is necessary. Again, that's free COVID-19 testing offered at Derelict Park, 2171 Mac Road in Douglasville. It's drive-through testing only Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And again, no appointment is necessary. The city of Douglasville and Douglas County, <coughs> excuse me, are working jointly in a collaborative effort, having a job fair on March 19th from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the Douglasville Conference Center. That's 6700 Church Street in Douglasville. Uh, the job fair will consist of one-on-one -on -one meetings with the city or county representatives. And due to COVID restrictions, space is limited. You're invited to visit CelebrateDouglasCounty.com to register. And that completes this evening's announcements. I yield back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Communications Director Rick Martin. Um, again, it, this is a, a great time and certainly we want to celebrate uh, Women's History Month. I want to celebrate all the women here in Douglas County and all across, not Douglas County, but Georgia in this nation. Um, the women have paved the way in so many areas and are making some very huge strides in this strides uh, just in all areas um, and facets of, of life. And I just wanted to take the time to celebrate uh, women. Uh, and also, uh, I, I'm working with the External Affairs Department. We will have host something virtually uh, before March ends so we can spend time and just have a virtual session with the women of Douglas County and celebrate all your success and uh, express our deep appreciation for all the great things that women uh, have done. And happy Women's Month again. And I certainly just would like to close with our three W's. And you know, I wear those three W's out, but it was just such encouraging uh, news today from uh, Director, uh, Deputy Director Lisa Crossman to hear that we are moving in the right direction. Uh, certainly thank you, uh, Director Valentine, for 
going out and, and getting those bearable messages, uh, message signs that they're flashing off the interstates. We had to ramp up our education again. And uh, and I agree with our vice chairman. Once we, if we don't double down on education, we just have to stay with it. If, if we relax a little bit, look like our numbers go up. So we will continue to educate, educate, and watch our trends uh, continue to move in the right direction here in Douglas County. So congratulations, but I'll close by saying, citizens, if you could continue to wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, watch your social distancing, and also wear a mask when in public. Certainly, I know we had some good news about those uh, citizens once after the two week uh, time, time frame, once you um, uh, receive your vaccines that you're clear, but I uh, still encourage you if you could just continue to wear your mask. But of course, we are happy with CDC's uh, new uh, relaxations of restrictions. But uh, we're, we have not reached, reached that herd immunity status yet. And that's what we're striving for. Uh, my ping has hit and they hit the 55 number the other day. So the word ping, I know was, uh, I heard Commissioner Robinson chuckle when she you thought that was real nice to hear the ping. So I have heard the ping and the citizens I'm moving forward with my vaccine real soon. So anyway, uh, if there's nothing else to come before this board and there's no further business uh, tonight to discuss, this meeting is adjourned. So thank you so much and have a great night.